Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to create an explode module in OpenSCAD. And what I have started here already is I have a few objects that I'm going to be using to explode. I'll be using the child module or the or children uh, modifier to do the exploding. So it's important to know how each one of these works. So the, the number of children I have here at that, a certain level, and I'm gonna just highlight each one. So I have a cylinder, I have a cone here, um, and then I have a cube with a hole in the middle. Um, it's hard to see the hole in the middle, but, you, uh, but you'll see that from that cylinder, it creates a hole in the middle. Um, and I've left it transparent just because I think it makes the video look a little bit better. And then what I have here is I have one bolt that's created with a union and let's um, let's activate only that one bolt so you can see it. So that's one bolt created with a union. And then I have this object here, which is um, would be treated as separate children without the union. And what, what would happen is, is eventually I'm going to create the explode so it moves these two bolts away from each other. But if I leave it like this, I'd have three pieces. So I'd have this cylinder, I'd have the bolt head, and then I'd have a bolt and they'd be, it'd be uh, exploded into three separate pieces. So let's highlight each, each of these so you can see. Um, let's get rid of my cube because it's obscuring it. Uh, nope, that's only, sorry. So I think it's that, right? Okay, so you see that's the cylinder and then, or that's the shaft and then this is the head. So each one of those would be this this bolt this shaft and this head would be exploded separately so we need to add we need to have this as a union uh, as as up here for it to for it to work correctly and I'll try to show you that when we actually add the explode module so with that in mind let's get started let's move over to the uh, basic explode so to create the basic explode we're gonna create a module and it's going to be named, not surprisingly, explode. And then in the explode, we need to add the children. So that adds all the children. Um, but we, we're going to be looping through each of those children. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a for loop. And the variable is going to be set by starting at zero and incrementing by one and looping through all the children minus one. The reason it's minus one is uh, I took that from the example is if the um, in case the children the number of children is less than two is what the example says but I don't really quite understand that so I'll just leave it in it doesn't seem to have any problem so what we're gonna do is for each one of the children, we're going to translate it by a certain distance. And to start out with, the distance is going to be i, which is the the variable that we're stepping. And we're just going to go um, times 10. And we're only going to translate in the y, or x axis in this case. So it's we're going to put 0 in for the y and the z axis. And then let's bracket in the children as the as the thing being translated so the last thing we need to do is is tell it what child is being uh, worked on at the time and we can do that by setting I so now the first time it's the child sub index at zero and then the second time it'll be the child index at one if there's a third at two and if there's a fourth it's the child indexed at three um, so uh, the children index starts at zero and, and goes up so that should be it for our basic explode. Let's try it. Oops, you said it was already, uh, I already had it set to explode. So let's, um, let's do this so you can see it. <laughs> so that's unexploded. And then, um, and now let's explode it. So you can see it just, it moves each object by by its origin so you can see there's a little problem there so the origin of these is at the center of the cylinder the origin of that cube is at its center so it doesn't look like it exploded correctly but it did 
so it exploded to the center. Um, why this one went to, I'm not exactly, oh, I, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, times 10, not exactly sure. So this should be basically, because I have five, one, two, three, four, five, this should be at 50. One, two, three, four, five, it's at 60. So we're missing something there, but uh, the basic functionality is correct. Um, and we'll have to we'll have to figure out why it's sort of creeping. Okay, so that's the basic explode, and we're gonna we're gonna move to um, next doing uh, adding a distance argument. So here we have our basic explode again, and to add a distance argument, first we're gonna set a distance, and we're just gonna set x equal to ten. Um, and you could use any variable, of course, but we're going to use x, so it's so it's obvious. We'll add the distance arguments argument here. So this is going to be a single variable distance argument, and here we will pass in x. So now x gets passed it into to the distance, and then to use it, we're just going to simply do instead of i times ten, we're going to do i times distance, and that should uh, have this pretty much the same result if I spelled distance correctly. So you see it hasn't really changed, but now we can more easily change the distance. Now that we have basic distance functionality, I'm gonna add an enabled parameter to the explode module. And we'll, we'll do that by first adding that as a parameter to be received or argument to be received. And then um, let's add the logic next so we're going to say if enable. So that means if the value of enable is is true, then complete the following function. So now we've we've just in bracketed, you know, uh, the distancing code. Uh, so if it's enabled, it'll it'll apply that distance. So then we're going to do if it's not enabled. So if not enable. And basically it's the same code as, as before, except we're not gonna do any translation. So it's go, go through all the children and, and add them, but uh, don't bother to, uh, don't bother to translate at all. So just get rid of the translate. And let's see, make sure we got the right brackets. So there we need one here. So I didn't need the I didn't need the brackets for the for loop, but I like them. So that should, so that should. Oh, and then we want to add, we want to set it whether it's true or not. So let's start it as false. See if we missed any coding. So there. So you see, uh, so it all it really did was uh, add add each of the children because if you don't have if you don't have this, see if I can disable this. Hold code block. No. Um, if well if you don't if you don't loop through these children in there. Oops, that's the wrong thing. I do that all the time. So if I disable that, that should, yeah. So I disabled this whole code block with the asterisk. And you see, these never actually get called because uh, they're, only, they're only added within the module. They're not, they're not outside the module call. So you have to actually uh, have something that puts them in whether it's enabled or not. So that's good. So let's, uh, so this is enabled and this is not enabled or disabled. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to do uh, the distance with vectors instead of just a, a simple x, and that'll give us some advantages. Now we're going to change, instead of passing in just a, a plain value, we're going to pass in a, a vector instead. So instead of x equals 10, we're going to do x equals 10 comma 0 comma 0 and this is going to allow us to be more flexible with the direction and the value so the beautiful thing here is that I don't have to change we don't have to change much um, the distance is going to just come in as whatever this variable is it's a vector so these aren't uh, these uh, variables are loosely cast if that applies to this type of programming language I'm not sure and we're going to just leave that distance as it is for now and you'll see uh, that it, uh, oops, I'm sorry. So I have, the one thing I have to add is the which 
piece of the vector we're using. So we're using uh, the X, which is at position zero. And so what we're gonna do, so that's all you have to do to, to, to um, create it as a vector. So now if we want it to move in the Y direction, let's just pass in a, a Y vector instead. So it's gonna be the same thing, but it's gonna be a zero here and a 10 there. And let's just pass in Y. And you'll see that it's not gonna, it's gonna break it because we have to add the distance calculation to the Y position. I'm gonna do Y times one and the distance calculation to the Z direction. So now this comes with an assumption and why, well, the reason I'm multiplying it I times distance, the first time through it's I is zero. So it's not gonna apply any distance and that makes it useful for us for, um, you know, um, for spreading these out without thinking too much. So now you see that they're spread out in the Y direction, which doesn't quite work because, because of the way things are positioned to start with. So, but that's a e very easy way to uh, pass in distances that have, that have multiple facets to them. So that's how we're gonna do, we're gonna pass the distance in with a vector. So let's just change uh, enabled distance using a vector. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is add centering. But actually before I add centering, what I wanna do is I wanna set this up so I'm using, and, and actually this is one of the reasons why I do it as a vector, is we're gonna do a, an explode within the explode. So I'm gonna copy this down here. So we're gonna explode the, the nuts in the Y direction and the, every, all the or I'm sorry, the bolts in the Y direction and everything else is gonna be exploded in the X direction. Or, I, or that might be backwards, but let's, let's see. So you'll see now we can have an explo explosions in, in multiple directions and we can also add, change the Y distance. Um, and that highlights the next step, which I already told you is gonna be centering because I'd like to have these in a more intelligent position. So I'd like it centered around uh, zero, zero, and I'd like this box to stay there, to stay in the center position. So we're gonna, we're gonna try to do that next. Um, to add centering to the module, we're gonna add a parameter or argument called center. Or let's, let's add that before the enable. And we're going to copy this enabled uh, actually, before I do that, let's let's add the the check here. So we're gonna do we're gonna check to see if it's centered. If it's not centered, we're gonna do the same thing that we have we've been doing. Um, and I think that needs to be in brackets. Yeah, it does. Or parentheses. Sorry. Okay. So. Basically that allows us no matter what center is, if center is false, which it is because we didn't set it at all, um, continue doing what you're doing. So now let's do, let's add centered code. So we know we're gonna do everything we did in enabled, but we're gonna add some centering. So let's call this, let's label this centered and change this to true. And so the need, the thing we need to find out is, is how many children we have and then the distance we need to move it over to get it centered, which is gonna be half the distance, I guess. So first let's, before we get into the loop, let's figure out how many children we have. And we can do that by simply uh, setting a variable, we'll call it count, and it's gonna be equal to the, uh, uh, just dollar sign children, which will return how many there are. And we're gonna say minus one. Because I, th I guess it, um, I, I think the index, oh, it's gonna count the actual number, not the index value. So the index value of say ch child number three, the index value is gonna be two, but the count would be three. So once we've counted it, we need to calculate the starting point for the explode. So let's call that explode start. And that's gonna be equal to, and this is, this is gonna be a little messy. Um, because we're going to do two things. We're going to do the explode starts going to become for be, be an array. So it's going to be an array 
so we're going to do the, repeat the calculation for each array value. Um, I could probably do that in two steps. Maybe let's do, let's do that. Let's do um, let's do explode distance, and then let's set that equal to count. Um, it's count times distance. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's not going to work. So uh, I'll type it here anyway. So it's it count times explode distance. I'll get it. Uh, divided by two, because we're only going to be moving halfway for to centering, and it's going to be times negative one. And the reason it's times negative one, I'll show you. I, actually, I don't need to show you. The distance um, is always going to be negative because I'm just going to be always shifting this in the negative y direction or the negative axis, so negative x, negative y, or negative z. And I don't even think that matters if you're translated because it's just always going to be centering it to the negative of whatever, you know, whatever your cent your origin is of the object. So I think we're okay. So that's going to be the basic formula. So let's just copy this. Uh, and that's going to go into explode start. So explode start is going to be an array. So let's put the start in the end brackets for the array. Let's get all the that out of the way. Okay, I'm going to move these out so it's easier for me because that's I think better that I think more like that. And let's finish this off. So sometimes I just pr put things in parentheses to make sure the order is correct. Um, okay, so now we're just we're just going to add this for so that's the x value, and this is going to be the y value. So if and so whatever distance you've passed, it's going to offset it uh, for that axis automatically there. So okay, and this will be the z. So all right, so let's get rid of this because we're not going to use that. And so this explode start. Now we're gonna we're gonna do a translate for the explode start, and it's going to be here and we'll just do all we got to do is translate that vector and that's it so now bracket that and bracket that and let's tab that in okay so there's so that moves us half half of the distance um, of cumul of the cumulative um, object of uh, the cumulative children so I think did I add an extra bracket nope let's see oh, okay so that looks good so let's see if that gets an error no error good um, probably because that wasn't called now let's now let's do uh, centered true so we're gonna add the centered to just the bolts here so we're gonna do center equals true Center equals sure, whatever that is. Okay, so as you can see, the two bolts are now centered around the zero, the around the origin. So that's what we were looking for. I'm not, I'm not sure what I did to make this move. I changed something. I want that to stay in position. So I want to center it, and also, I also want to increase the distance those bolts go. Oops, oh, that's why, because I'm, I got it all backwards. Okay, so the next thing we're, I'll figure out what what I've got miscombobulated there and then we'll go we're gonna do we're gonna use uh, this module as it is with an assembly okay so the one piece I was wondering about is in my final product I have this cube it stays at the origin while the bolts are exploded and then these are exploded and the reason why it's not doing that here is because this explode is operating on four children this is one child this is the second child third and fourth so this is in the second position of four. So that's what it's supposed to do. If I wanted these to operate independently, all I have to do is move this, this that whole block to outside the explode. So now this explode has two children and this has three. So now you'll see that that cube stays at zero, zero. So uh, how you nest and move the explodes around is, go is gonna make a difference to to what happens. So just count the children and make sure that all you you want all those children included in that specific explode. 
So the next thing we're going to be doing is um, how to do this with an assembly approach. So this is intermixed with code and you can see you could have these explodes all over the place and not have a lot of really control but if we do it with an assembly approach and I'm not going to actually type that through I'm just going to walk you through if we um, the code I have if if we do it with an assembly approach it's a lot cleaner so I'm going to show you that next okay so these are the pieces to my assembly that I'll show you and what I'll show you is I have part one and part one is 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 um, going to be the 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 bolts oops can't do it that way so I'll just uh, let's do this let's do it this way so you see I, I wanted a reveal but that's not gonna happen so if, if I have part one you'll see that's the one bolt here and you'll see I've got it defined and then if you have if I highlight part two you see that's the other bolt so there we got have some nice code reuse so that's gonna keep our, our project more understandable and then part three or part two is going to be the cube part three is that cylinder and part four is the cone and you can see how nicely um, how much easier this is to understand you know you could have these named if you wanted to but so here are all the all the pieces separately and then there's the, the explode module down here we have distance center and enabled so once you've gotten your parts defined, you can kind of ignore them and set, you could even set them in another uh, file altogether and then you can play with your assembly. Um, so if we want to do false for the bolts, that, that'll evaluate as false. Let's put that back to true. If we wanted to center the, um, center the whole thing, you see that's you know, those are the other parts centered. Let's set that back to false. Okay. Um, so you can see really easily how much better if you treat things as an assembly, how much uh, easier it's going to be. And then, you know, we could also individually translate these parts in, uh, in this. So, you know, to move things around for an assembly and and we can uh, abstract the assembly transformations from the actual part transformation. So that I, I really recommend an approach that has this kind of uh, this kind of approach. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to animate the uh, the explosion. So most to animate the explosion, most of the work is done for you by OpenSCAD. All you have to do is uh, provide it. Uh, is add the t dollar the dollar sign t variable to the appropriate places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a animate variable y animate, and it's it's going to be actually let me just copy these. So we'll do a y animate and an x animate, and we're going to do dollar sign t times the distance. So dollar sign t times the distance in the y. And that's it. That's all you have to do to animate it uh, in code. You do have to take an action in OpenSCAD, and that's view, and it's click on animate. Now you'll see right away nothing happens. It's because you have to add a few values. You want to, you have to tell it how many frames per second, let's say 24, and then you have to tell it how many steps uh, that you needed to take, and that's overall. So it's uh, the steps is independent of the frames per second. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say 60 steps, and then you'll see it starting to animate. Now, so you see this is looping through time, and that's always going to be a factor of one. So it's uh, or or a part of one. So it's a percentage of one or whatever you want to call it um, in the animation. So let's save this first. So now the final, the final thing we have to do is actually use the variable uh, in the animation. So once I put the XA in, you'll see it starts animating. And this is actually, uh, what it's actually doing, it's recompiling every time. Um, and this is actually a way you can actually use the debug. If you keep animation running, you could, um, it's constantly recompiling. And as soon as you make a mistake, you'll lose your op your object so that's a that's an aside so let's add the animation to so I think that's a possibly a good way to do animation um, you could probably create an animate module that just swaps things I don't know 
you might be able to create a really cool way to do anim to add animation but i think that's pretty dang pretty dang simple you just uh create a variable and use that in the call so um to turn it off you've got good control you can do it right you know right in your module call the other way so the other way people do explodes are by adding transforms to all their objects and maybe the transform is multiplied by a, a value the reason why this is an advantage or I think is better and is because you'll notice my part to explode these parts none of these get changed I don't have extra translates I don't have like like some people will do a plus uh, plus explode value something like that you know uh, explode X or something explode Y and that's all fine and good but now you've got you've got these all intermingled in your code and it just adds complexity and confusion and then when you want to get rid of it uh, you can you can set them to zero but would do you want to publish it with that in there or you know it's just it's messy uh, this way if I want to get rid of the explode I I either have the module in another library um, I just get rid of the explode calls it's I think better let me know if you um, if you have a better way I'd love to hear about it in the comments. If you use this, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And if you like my videos, please subscribe and like and click the alarm bell and you'll get uh, updates when I make new ones. So thanks again for watching and uh, talk to you next time.